Habitica is a productivity tool that uses classic RPG-style mechanics such as leveling up, fighting bosses with your friends, and collecting that sweet, sweet loot to encourage you to develop good habits and just generally get your shit together. So I've been using Habitica for a little over a month now and I absolutely love it. It keeps me organized, productive, and is even making me healthier. How exactly? Well, I'll show you, starting with the basic mechanics of the game. Before we get started, I'd just like to note that I'm going to be showing you everything in this video on their website, but they do have an app that's available on Android and iOS. I do encourage you to use their website whenever possible because their app can be a little buggy, but I understand the convenience of having it right in your pocket, so whatever works best for you. Anyway, basic mechanics. After you've signed up and set up your character, next to your avatar you will see these two bars. One for health, and one for experience. Experience is gained when completing tasks, and once you've reached a certain amount of experience, you'll level up. Leveling up will unlock various different things, mainly at level 10 you unlock the class system and a mana bar will be added here as well, but more on that later. Health works a little differently as you won't be gaining any from completing tasks, but rather losing health when missing them. Also, whenever your health reaches zero, you will die. Dying will drop you one level as well as resetting any experience and gold you had to zero, so try to set realistic goals when using this app. Moving down below your avatar you will see three boxes, one for habits, one for dailies, and one for to-dos. Whatever you're using Habitica for, you're going to be divvying up your tasks into these three main categories. Habits are things that can be done more than once a day and can be good, bad, or even both. Let's say you're trying to watch what you eat, so you add a habit called eat healthy food or eat junk food. We'll set it up to be both positive and negative, and now whenever you click that plus sign you'll be rewarded with experience and gold. However, when you click the minus sign, your health will drop slightly. There are so many different ways to set these up, so get creative. Dailies are things that are scheduled and repeated. Don't be fooled, dailies don't actually need to be everyday things. They can also be on specific days of the week, or repeat every week, every month, or even every year. When you check off a daily, you will be rewarded with experience and gold. The difference between these and habits is that you will take damage if you don't check off a daily the day it's due. These are especially useful for establishing everyday routines. Finally, we have to-dos. They are usually only done once, and while you can set due dates for them, you will never take damage from missing them. To-dos will also reward you with more gold and experience the longer they've been in your list. I don't know if there's anything else to say here other than it's a to-do list. But fun! Also, you can assign a difficulty when creating any of these three types of tasks. The harder a task is, the more golden experience you will get when completing it. But it also increases the damage you take when missing a daily or giving into a bad habit. Now you might have noticed this fourth box over here, the rewards tab. You can create a reward and assign it a cost in gold, so whenever you want to relax and watch some TV, you'll have to kick a little coin to remind yourself you're not being productive. Under your rewards are some pinned items from the market, if you're motivated more by virtual items rather than real life stuff. So that's a perfect segue into the market. Here is where you'll spend all the gold you've earned from bettering yourself as a human being. Items here can range from purely cosmetic, such as pets and outfits, to battle gear that increase your stats. Your stats are important when doing boss battles, so let's talk quests and parties now. In Habitica, there are a couple different ways to interact with different users. There are guilds, which are public groups, usually for people with similar hobbies or interests. There's the tavern, which is essentially Habitica's message board, with the added feature of being able to check into the tavern to prevent taking damage from anything. Which I think is borderline cheating, but it's a feature, so hey, use it if you want. And finally, there are parties, which are usually people you know personally, or if you don't have any friends, you can be in a party by yourself, or find people online also looking for party members. You can be in as many guilds as you like, but you can only be in one party. The special thing about parties is that they can go on quests. 
If you have a quest scroll in your inventory, you can invite your party to participate and you will all work together to bring down a boss. Bosses take damage from your completed tasks and will damage all the players in the party for any of your missed dailies. I do wish there was a little more interactivity with this feature, such as an actual arena to fight them in, but it's still pretty fun. If you want to make these more interesting, you can always make a challenge to go along with it. I'm going to let the wiki define this one for me because I don't see a better way to explain it. Challenges are community events in which players compete and earn prizes by completing a group of related tasks. Challenges can be site-wide or exclusive to a guild or party. Party-exclusive challenges are not available to non-party members. Basically, challenges are a way for multiple people to do the same tasks. You can join any challenge that's public, any challenge that is run by a guild that you're in, or any challenge created inside your party. I've used party challenges so my roommates and I all have the same deep clean task to ensure it actually gets done every week. Which it doesn't, but at least we take damage from it when we don't so maybe eventually we will. Finally I'm going to quickly go over the class system. Once you hit level 10 you will be able to choose between becoming a warrior, mage, healer, or rogue. As you level up past level 10 you will also learn different skills. Casting these skills will use mana from the mana bar I mentioned at the beginning of this video. I encourage you to read into the strengths and weaknesses of each of the classes once you hit level 10 and see what kind of gameplay you'll enjoy the most. And those are the basics of Habitica. It's obviously not for everyone, but if you want to have that constant feeling of progression you get from RPG games injected into your everyday life, then it's pretty amazing. As for me, this video probably wouldn't even exist if it weren't for Habitica. As you can see, most of my tasks are pretty basic routine stuff, but the most important ones are these creativity tasks. I'm very prone to putting off my creativity for any reason I can find. These tasks force me to spend at least some time every day working on creative projects, so I don't end up with another two year gap in between my videos. Also, if you come to find that you are unsatisfied with certain aspects of Habitica, change it. It's open source. You can contribute by writing code, creating pixel art, submitting to the wiki in so many more ways. Also, as you contribute, you can earn contribution badges on your profile so everyone knows how cool you are. And you can get gems, which currently can only be bought with real money. So get to it! I hope this video helped you, whether you were on the fence about joining or just wanted to know about all the different features. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you really, really like me, go ahead and subscribe. Either way, thanks for watching. I have so many tasks to check off now. Done, done, and done. Ah, uh, that's nice.